Field, Dirty Drive Away. Coming today to you from Orpington in Kent. Uh, I've had some uh, requests from some subscribers to do a slightly more in-depth video on driveway ceiling. So today, uh, as you can see from behind me, we have a reasonable size, uh, it's about 95 to 100 square meters of Tegula style block paving. And today we are gonna be sealing it. Um, this was cleaned a couple of days ago. I've just finished sanding it. And today, the sealer of choice, we're gonna be using the Resin Block Superior Gloss. Never done a gloss one, so it's gonna be interesting. I've used the, uh, the matte. Uh, this one should be full bling, nice and shiny. Um, so basically, uh, I'm going to do um, a little bit on the edges, a little bit on the rollering technique, rather than trying to show you the whole uh, sealing process in a video form. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a time lapse of it because it can take several hours doing this and the battery simply is not going to last on the camera. So uh, very briefly, some tools of choice. You're going to need a, uh, a paint scuttle. These have got the removable liners. Uh, this sealer does set hard um, and obviously a lot of the materials you're going to use are going to be sacrificial. Um, so basically I've got a nice deep paint scuttle, a couple of cheap brushes, a uh, nice big one for the edges, uh, smaller cheapy just for cutting in around the tighter corners. Um, also going to need roller, I use a, uh, a medium pile, medium to long pile uh, masonry roller, double arm because it gives it a nice bit of strength. You could get away with using a single arm but you may find that the uh, pole wants to bend out on you when you're putting pressure on the roller. So a nice double armed roller with a nice uh, nice, a nice, uh, fluffy pile uh, holds out, holds onto the, a lot of the sealer, allows you to get it onto the ground a lot quicker. Obviously with a pole, make your life easier. Don't get on your hands and knees, do this up in the air. The only time you get on your hands and knees is when you're cutting the edges in. So I'm going to nip around the back, I'm just going to show you some bits. Right, there are many different types of sealers available on the market. Uh, I'm a ResiBlock approved contractor. I do quite like using the ResiBlock stuff. It's very, very good stuff. Uh, so um, basically the coverage rate on this sealer is a two coat application. So your first coat is gonna, it's gonna cover the blocks, but it's also gonna soak into the sand, stabilize the sand. That's gonna bind the sand up. Uh, obviously when you clean block paving, you are gonna piss off the local ants. Uh, so after you sand it, you may find that you've got um, some ants trying to dig their way out. So make sure that when you do uh, come to um, to seal these, you've got a spare bit of sand on you, especially if it's a couple of days later, because you may find that you've got uh, ants that have uh, burrowed and dug their way out of the um, of the joint in sand. So as you can see in front of me, we've got the block paving. Let's just pan you down. Now the coverage rate on this sealer, like I said, is two coat application. You're looking at three square meters per liter on the first coat and six square meters per liter on the second coat. So these tins come in five liters. So mathematics, you're looking at 15 square meters per five liter tin. Now, as you can see on the floor for representation that I've done specially for you guys, the masking tape boundary that you can see there Pan you down again just so you can see. So that area there that's within that masking tape is approximately 15 square meters, give or take. I didn't get any ruler out, I just stepped it. So give or take, that's approximately 15 square meters. So you should find that five liters will cover that area. So as you can tell from the, uh, the large area, we do need quite a lot of sealer. I'm gonna pan you back up. So this is approximately 100 square meters. Um, so to do two coats on this, you are looking at nearly 10 tins of sealer for two coats. Uh, and at 55 to 60 pound a tin, you're looking at close on 600 pound in just a sealer to give this two coats. Now obviously there are other sealers on the market, some are one coat, uh, and obviously there are some cheaper sealers on the market. Uh, ResiBlock give this a five year lifespan, and they're one of the only companies that offer a no oil stain guarantee. So once you've put this down, if your car happens to leak oil on it, 
they will guarantee that oil will not soak into the block. You should be able to wipe it off with a cloth, walk away, happy days. So if you have got a brand new driveway laid, it is a very, very good investment to have this done. Uh, just make sure that if you have got a new driveway, that you uh, kind of make sure you haven't got any efflorescence blooms. On new driveways, you are prone to efflorescence, which is the white powdery residue you can get left on blocks, especially if it's a lighter color block and some of the reds. Right, that's enough talking from me. I'm going to start. Uh, we're going to pan around. We're going to start up there in the corner around the bay window. I'm going to take the camera over there so I can show you roughly what I'm doing. I'm going to do a little section over there. And like I say, I'm going to put the camera back on the wall and we're going to go into time lapse so you can see the whole situation unfolding in a mere matter of minutes. Wonderful technology. Right, I'm going to switch this off reposition and come back to you in a minute right repositioned I've also filled up my little uh, my little scuttle with said product now when you are used I say there are many different types of sealers on the market this is a solvent based polyurethane sealer and it stinks to high heaven so if you are working in confined areas a little bit like this if you've got a lot of area like this you may need a mask because you will get high as a kite. Um, it is very, very strong stuff. It smells very, very similar to thinners. Um, obviously, I'm only going to do this patch here, and then obviously I'm back out in the open again. So I'm just going to try and show you this, hopefully without seeing too much of the back of my head. Um, if I need to adjust the camera, I will. But basically, I've put five liters into the scuttle. I've got my cheapy, cheapy brushes. Uh, I'm going to be using the bigger one to cut in around the edges here. Um, a little tip, a little note for um, when you're doing this, obviously you need to make sure you have swept um, this block paved driveway to an inch of its life. All of the sand, as you can see, it has to be below the chamfer um, of the blocks. If, if your sand is flush with the blocks, you will find that the roller will pull the sand out. Now obviously the roller should skim across the surface of the block and as you squeeze it out, the, uh, the sealer will then soak into the block, into the sand, into the joint in sand, which will then set the sand uh, later when it dries. If your sand is flush with the joints, you will find that the roller will pull a lot of the sand out and it will then get stuck to the top of the blocks. So make sure your sand is below the chamfer. Um, you will find that if you, the more you sweep this, the more sand you're going to keep getting, getting, getting out. That's just inevitable. So what I tend to find is if you sweep it, sweep it really, really well. And then if you've got a little um, like garden vac, nothing too powerful. We don't want to blow the pants off of it. Um, just get the little garden vac. I've got a little cordless job. Just uh, lightly blow over the top of the surface so you get rid of all the sand on the actual blocks. That way it won't give you that gritty texture when it all sets. Right, enough chat. Let's get some sealer down. I'm going to move the camera slightly over so I can actually get in there. Not a great deal of room in this corner. Right, the trick to this, don't get it anywhere you don't want it. Um, so don't go toshing it up the wall, don't tosh it all over your brickwork. The only way to get this stuff off is by using like thinners or xylene or whatever they call it. Um, because it will set hard and obviously being the fact this is gloss it will show up everywhere so you make sure with your sanding you want to get plenty of this stuff in the joints um, don't skimp skimp on it but then you don't want to flood the area because you will end up losing all your sealer down the joints and obviously this stuff is expensive so make sure you get a good a good dose in, inside the sand joints you'll find that better later on when we get the roller out but load up your brush it doesn't matter if you dribble it on the pavement because we're going to be doing it anyway just don't go toshing it up the wall Cut the edges in, get a nice lot inside the sand. You'll see the sand will turn colour when it's wet. Don't worry if it runs, 
will run into the joint. It shouldn't take any sand with it. It's what you want. The sealer will soak into the sand. The more sealer you get in the sand, the better it's going to bind it. You're going to want to work in sections. I wouldn't advise you on a driveway this size to go around cutting all the edges in because you're, you want to keep yourself a wet, a wet edge. So I would say work within a couple of square meters at a time, ensuring that all your, you've got a nice wet edge all the way around. If you, if you do a, a driveway this size and cut all the edges in in one hit, you'll find that it may start drying by the time you get around there with the roller. The reason you do the edge with a brush is because sometimes the roller won't, won't get into the corners and if it does the chances are it will end up all up the wall. Also bear in mind when you get close to brickwork you may find due to the, the porosity of the bricks that the sealer may bleed onto any surrounding areas. So you may find it will start bleeding up the wall These paint trays, these inserts, they're all sacrificial. This stuff will set like industrial hair gel. When you're using the brush, if you're gonna go across the joint, run across the joint this way. Don't run with the joint because you will pull the sand out with the brush. These medium and long pile rollers will soak up a lot of liquid, so you've got to be careful when you've um, when you've loaded up the roller that you only get it where you actually want the sealer to be. It will probably dribble out the ends. If you are going to seal, make sure you've got some thinner or some kind of um, solvent-based tool cleaner because afterwards you'll want to clean your tool, you know, the, um, the arm with the thinner, otherwise it will set hard. So get the roller down. Once you've been using this for a while, you'll find that it'll, um, it won't be quite as bulky and fluffy, but you're gonna to wanna to squidge it out, get it in those joints, make sure all those joints are nice and full. You'll find that by rolling diagonally across the joints, I can't really do it in here because it's quite a tight area, you'll find that running diagonally reduces the risk of pulling any of the, uh, the sand out. But you can clearly see when you've got it in the joints because the sand changes colour. Right, I'm going to pull the camera back.
see that when you squish it, it kind of floods the joints. That's what you want. And you don't want to flood it, keep flooding it over and over again because you'll end up just chucking all your sealer down the joint. Well, that's what you want. You want the, the, you want the actual sealer in the joints. And that's what's going to seal your sand, bind your sand up, stop the weeds, stop the ants, stop the sand from coming out. Now what you don't want with this um, this sealer and probably any other type of sealer, you don't want pooling on the actual bricks itself. You don't want a big pool of water sit, uh, of sealer sitting there. So make sure you go over the roller just to make sure that you've taken off the excess. This stuff being gloss, it is gonna dry shiny. It'll end up looking like a nice shiny bowling ball after it's finished. Right, so that's basically the insights into the sealer. Um, so long as you've done a good job of sanding, I'm gonna show um, I'm gonna show you a couple of pictures now, obviously. I'm gonna show you a picture of this driveway is sealed. I'm also gonna show you a picture of the driveway that I, man, I spotted on my on my um, on my journeys. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty atrocious sanding job. It wasn't a new uh, driveway by any means, he just had it cleaned. Somebody thought this was adequate sealing. Here comes the picture, sorry, sanding, here comes the picture now. Now, as you can see, that is quite atrocious sanding. Um, that has now actually been there for about a week like that. So I don't think the contractor's got any intentions of coming back and, um, and, and actually finishing that off. Uh, that needs to be swept off properly because that is absolutely atrocious sanding. Uh, you're gonna have a hell of a job getting rid of that when it's rained. Right, I'm gonna switch this off, put the camera back up on the wall and uh, stick this in time-lapse mode so we can get this, uh, get this going. Right, welcome back. Uh, we are now uh, about 24 hours later. I've just put down the second coat. Uh, there was no point in me time lapsing the second coat, it'd be exactly the same as the first coat, and it's uh, a bit boring you watching me do that. So here we have it. Second coat's all done. You can see. Just give you a little, uh, little pan around. There you go, that was the ResiBlock Superior Gloss. Two coats. Yeah, it went down quite nicely. Um, I've had a couple of people asking, even since I started doing this video. Um, excuse the wind, it's very windy today. Um, about, not say troubleshooting, but issues when sealing. Uh, one of the issues, is milky patches um, now milky patches are normally uh, after um, after applying the sealer you get like this sort of milky kind of residue um, which dries on the surface this is normally if the blocks are wet um, or the sealer has got any kind of moisture in it obviously sealers do only have a, a shelf life a lot of them once you've cracked open the tin especially if they've got silver tins they don't have a particularly long shelf life because the solvents don't evaporate also if they get wet they can introduce water 
so any kind of moisture on the block or in the sealer can cause milky patches. Um, the other issue I've, um, I've been asked about is like bubbling on the surface of the blocks. Uh, very unusual one, can't say I've really come across it. Um, but not personally. Um, the only way that I, I would see that any kind of bubbling would be on the surface is if perhaps you're using a sprayer uh, and you're introducing too much air, same as if you kind of shake the tin too much. Um, if you're introducing too much air, um, and obviously there is bubbles on the surface, then it may cause the uh, the bubbles to dry and then sort of crack. Um, honestly, don't know on the bubbling. Uh, so I've never seen it myself. Uh, I've only um, I've only uh, I've had people ask me about it. So that's a theory. I wouldn't recommend spraying this stuff down. Um, it's polyurethane based. Um, it dries quite quickly and you'd need to use a brand new sprayer because obviously any kind of chemical you may have had in a sprayer previously can obviously affect, um, can possibly affect the adhesion. Um, and also because the polyurethane sets hard quite quickly, you may find it will just gunk up the sprayer and it won't spray particularly well. Um, and if you did spray it down, you may need to roller it anyway, just to kind of distribute it properly. Um, to save it kind of pooling up too much on the blocks or like you say end up with too much air in it so the best method is a roller yes it may pull out some of the sand um, but that's just normal uh, obviously that you get more so on these tegular style blocks because obviously the uh, the edges have got more of a chamfer on them but yeah that's it from me another ceiling job done happy cleaning bye for now <laughs>